back to Logic Industries. Getting ready to start on another project. Uh, this time, it's a personal thing, nothing to do with the business. I'm going to build a birthday present for a very special lady. And this won't air until after I give it to her and everything, so it won't spoil the surprise. But what I'm going to make is a uh, something that looks sort of like that there. Make a, a magnetic uh, knife block. This lady's a dandy chef, classically trained, uh, and she takes very good care of her knives. And I want to make her something so you can put them on the put them on our kitchen counter and uh, actually still be able to see the blades. So that's what we're going to do here. Got my steel, some wood. Now <laughs> there's going to be a lot of woodworking in this project, and I got to confess. I'm a metal worker. I am not a woodworker. I I'm terrible with wood, and honestly, I hate working with this stuff. It don't bend for shit, and it catches on fire every time I try to weld it. It just, you know, I don't like it. So, anyway, I'm liable to commit all sorts of atrocious acts against this wood. So, if you're a professional woodworker, I apologize up front. I'm going to do some horrible, horrible things to these two pieces of wood. There's just nothing you can do about it. So. I gotta go dig up some magnets and uh, get everything set up, and then we'll kind of get this wood half assed to the right size. So, hang on. Okay, guys, so here we are. I'm gonna start on the big piece because I don't really know what else to do. <laughs> and I'm just gonna get this top flat. This is the worst side, so we'll get it kind of half assed flat and down to size, and then I'll flip it over and square it up just like it was a piece of metal. I know that's probably not how you're supposed to do it. I don't actually know how you're supposed to do it, but this is how I'm going to do it. So, hang on. Here we go. Oh, it'd help if I turned on the phase converter. Yeah, let's try that again. Oh, so much better. Just pause for a moment here. I've got a two-inch face mill here, and I've changed out the inserts of these nice sharp uh, aluminum cutters. So hopefully, I won't be a burr fest. We'll see. I'm going to take about 30,000, see how that goes. Well, pretty well, except my cut kind of petered out. Come back here and take a little more. Close.
All right, that's got it. We're going to have to cut that end off anyway, so it doesn't have to clean up perfect. side just the same and I'll bring it back when we go square the ends. So I got my block setting in here. I cut it off in the bandsaw. You guys didn't need to see that. Everybody knows how bandsaw works. And I got the back side which you can't see. I'm zoomed in real close here. I got the back side squared up uh, and ready to be slicked off. It's done. So I'm just going to do this side here so you can see how it's happening. This is a very sharp high speed steel uh, one inch by about three inch length of cut Putnam end mill. It's a dandy uh, two flute jobber. Cuts sweet. I'm running at about uh, 3,000 RPM in a end mill holder. So it's working pretty good. Hopefully it won't blow up or chip real bad. We'll see. It didn't on the last side. So here we go. <laughs> so to speak. I got my digital readout set when I got the backside cut so I know where I need to be. We got a little chip there but it was chipped before. I believe we're going to have to cut some off the thickness to clear that. wood it is. <laughs> I just salvaged uh, chunks of it from hither and yon, so I can't even remember where I got it from. But it's nice and hard and you can see the grain is pretty, so that's a really the only only reason I picked it because I liked how it looked. So, Alright, I'm going to change tools out and then we'll face the top off here and kite. Okay, so I got it switched over to 4 inch face mill. Got them same dandy sharp carbide inserts in it though. I uh, believe I'm going to have to, I uh, should have buzzed that down before I turned it off. So we're going to turn the speed down a little bit, I believe. And we're just going to sort of face this off until I get down below my chip a little bit here so that the chamfer will take it off. So we're going to make a bunch of dust now. Fifteen hundred RPM. We'll see how that does. And about uh, let's take uh, twenty-five to start with. See what that does. I wish I knew what kind of wood this was. It cuts nice.
think we're probably going to have to take another 25. I think I'm going to go close the lid on my toolbox so I don't end up uh, having to dust everything inside of it. This right here has got to be my number one thing I hate about wood. It makes such a damn mess. Generally speaking, I try not to work wood, but some people are worth the trouble. So I believe that'll do it. I'm gonna put a pretty heavy chamfer on the edges anyway, so I think that I think that chip will go away. So I'm gonna change tools to a chamfer tool and uh, bring you back. So I got my chamfering tool in there now. It's another one of these dandy indexables. Can't use them for everything, but boy, when you can, they're really nice. Uh, Two insert this time. We're going to run at about 2,000 RPM. And I, I just got me fiddling around here and got my chamfer set to the thickness or the depth I want. So now I can run it all around without having to uh, do a bunch of flexing around on camera. So let's go ahead and cut this and see what happens. Well, that worked nice. I'm just going to go ahead and back off this other direction and set my offset and go, go for it.
there we are. Nice chamfers. Our little tiny chip there, but it don't look too bad. I think we got away with it. So, in pretty good shape here. So I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side, and uh, I'll bring you back when i got something interesting to show. Hey guys, I was uh, set up here drilling holes and uh, realized that uh, I wasn't recording it, so <laughs> we're going to come in a little bit in the middle here. But uh, what I'm doing here is I'm pre-drawing the block for the uh, number six screws that are going to hold on the magnets. Um, I just want to do this so I don't have to worry about any splitting or stripping out the screws when I go to put everything together. So it's a 764 drill bit. Uh, I'm just drilling all the way through in one shot, and then when I dig, make the spot face for the magnet to set down in, uh, it'll clean up the burr on the other side. So I'm just going to finish this now. There's all our screw holes. So now I'm going to have to change tools to a 5 8 inch uh, two flute and uh, we'll do the spot, spot faces. Okay, so I got my tool changed. It's a 5 8 inch uh, two flute, high speed steel, brand new Niagara Man. It is just razor sharp. Uh, it's double ended, so I couldn't even put it in a collet. I had to hold it in this uh, TG100 chuck. Uh, my pilots aren't bored through the ones I got here, so I can't hold double-ended end mills in them. But these are too good a deal to pass up, so I just have to hold them how I can hold them. I can use them with a CNC machine, too. So I'm centered up over my hole here, and uh, I'm just going to turn the mill on, and we're going to touch off, and then I'll dial in my depth, and we'll do some spot faces. About 1,500 RPM. There's our touch. Set my Z. I'm going to run the quill up out of the way. Now my magnets are an eighth of an inch thick, and I want them just below the surface. So I'm going to set the depth of my spot face to 135 thou. That way I got got them uh, 10 thou below flush. All right. There's our setup. spot face. Now we'll move on to the next one and uh, check and make sure our magnet fits before we do too many of them. Okay, so those are going to press in there just a tiny little bit, which is fine. I'd rather press in than be too loose, so that's going to work. There we go. Our counterboard is all done on this side. And I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And uh, then it'll just be down to sanding and clear coating it and be ready for assembly.